This is uh, just a short video to explain some of the ideas and processes uh, behind uh, my allotment plot, which I've sort of put into action and sort of developed over the last uh, three, well, two to three years really. So what I've got here is just a basic diagram. This just shows that this is like a side-on view. This is a ground level, just to show it's on a slight sloping slight site. So if you imagine this is a ground here, this is soil, this is the sky, so there's a ground. So what I want to do is put, put some raised beds in, but what I, I didn't want to do is end up with loads of sort of sloping beds like this. I wanted them all on, on the level. And obviously if you've got the sun coming in here, um, and then when it's raining, the rain will come down, and if it's on a slope, it will tend to, to, to tend to run off, and um, any nutrients in, in the soil will tend to over time tend to wash off. And you've got this little clay compacted sort of pan here. So what I really wanted to do is get get all the nutrients to sort of permeate down into the soil and in a way sort of semi-terrace the plot as well. So I, I wanted to do away with this sort of slopey business so I'll just kind of level them up. Um, something like that or what I'll do just make a nice new level bed, something like this. So obviously on a sloping site you can dig away material or you can build material up or you can take some material off the high spots and put it in the low spots to sort of level it up. Obviously you're kind of you're, you're taking topsoil off here and then you expose exposing subsoil. So what I really wanted to do is sort of is terrace it a little bit and um, build up with lots of organic matter. So I'm just using sort of scaffold boards. So I make the sort of scaffold boards here. I don't want it to snap so that line. And then where the paths were I was just using kind of uh, wood chip sort of wood chip mulches. So maybe that I'll copy this. And then this this bit could be kind of stepped down a little bit like that, so you're not adding crazy amounts of organic matter just to kind of get it level. So you just have to do something like this. And in the first kind of year, this woodwork would be a bit superficial. Already wouldn't really be doing a huge amount. Um, um, the soil would, would or the compost mulch would kind of bring it up to that. And then it's only over subsequent subsequent years it would just. Uh, Use the, the timber to kind of give you that that, um, that re um, retainer, but if you're working with a kind of a, a, an exposed um, or a brand new site where you you can pretty much got free reign what you can do, uh, you haven't got established plants and things to, to kind of move, or you're working around greenhouses and things like that. What you can do it in a way is you can just use use compost mulches and then you can have an, a, an area where the path is which just be wood chip and then you can do more so just kind of build it up you don't really need the wood work but what i found is when i was working on an open site without any any paths um it, it soon became really kind of compacted and unworkable and, and obviously in the uk uh, especially in london where you got really horrible heavy London clays it becomes a, a sort of quagmire already and, and it's just really unpleasant so I really wanted to go for raised beds and using kind of no dig just letting soil life kind of work the, the mulches into into the ground each year so I wanted to use when I started with a blank canvas I wanted to have some sort of framework and literally I was using using reclaimed scaffold boards so they're quite cheap but um, what I'll do is um, over subsequent years I'll use the kind of structures built in there but when I'm mulching I, I kind of won't really worry about having exposed wood or anything like that and so I'll just, just kind of mount, mount the compost up and obviously if you've got the sun coming in from this direction there's going to be more sun on here and as it works around here this is the, the north side and this is the sort of south side so predominantly the sun's coming from this direction here and um, this is going to be less exposed to full sun so if you've got a sort of low growing cops they'll tend to um, in terms of harvest they'll they'll come 
here first and as you get more sun and as you harvest those and then the crops you'll get more kind of yield from this side as well so it's quite nice to have that sort of gentle sort of curve but because I'm trying to build soil because I, I didn't really want to work into that clay and try and break clay up it's much easier to get organic matter and then once you've got that nice deep mulch when it rains the rain permeates through to the mulch and it keeps that layer of clay well this is topsoil but the clay's under there you haven't got to go down far to expose it so once that's kept, that's kept mulch, the clay maintains moisture in there. It's not getting baked hard in the summer. It's not getting that kind of crust on it. So it's it's much much more, more workable. But um, I wanted to build some sort of worm beds, and what I found um, these were kind of free locally. And these are I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see, but this is 25 litre containers, and um, car wash sort of detergent comes in the, these containers. And I made a basic sort of worm tower or a kind of soil feeding station using these containers so I cut the cut the top off I actually keep these as a, an aeration fitting for something else so um, for now I'll just keep the top of the bin and I'll show you that in a subsequent video but um, I drilled a number of holes in there so once these are buried into the soil the worms can actually work work around in these and um, they've been really effective uh, so what I'll do is I'll just sort of show I'll get rid of this for now so here is the, the soil level, so what I'll do is I'll basically dig a hole. Bear with me. And I'll click on that again. So I've sort of dug a hole like this. It's not obviously not in proportion to the size of the bed, but this is just for the sort of illustration. So here's a little diagram just to show the this sort of worm worm over the holes. And what I found is um, I drill these holes about 20 millimeters, five on each side, maybe 10 on the bottom, 10 to 12 on the bottom. This hole I made a bit bigger because what I found is if you drill those 20 millimeters, it's quite hard to get out. So when the compost is up, up to the top here, you can actually put your finger through that hole there, and then you can sort of hike the whole thing out the ground. And it's much much easier to harvest and because these are only 25 litres it's not going to be any heavier than 25 sort of kilos even if it's completely saturated and so they're quite they're manageable and if you, if this is a worm bin here once that's finished composting down and what will happen say you fill it up to, to this sort of level here like that and then after a after kind of a couple of weeks there'd be well, let me do it now yeah but I think the, the level will sort of drop down and then you can kind of add fresh material on in, in here and then just basically fill and forget and um, park compost material in, in here and then when it when it's time to, to move it you've got a, a nice big 25 litre container of the free kind of mulch or, or compost so what I was doing is I was fitting this uh, so it's level with the top of the, the surface of the compost in the raised beds and then underneath I was just kind of putting in a layer of wood chip as well and then that just that's the sort of second sort of level of, of drainage as well so if you're going straight into clay and this isn't isn't clay the clay's kind of lower down here but I'd, I'd, I'd add a lot of organic matter underneath as well and then when it rains the rain will permeate through through the kind of worm bin of the, the material in there keeping that moist but then you've got the drainage here so it's not going to become a sump and, and become saturated and obviously after a while the the worm activity the worms will kind of work material into the surrounding soil and it's much much easier to, to work the soil around these and when it comes to harvesting it's you'll really notice especially on the top surface it'll be, be beautiful worm cast here and um, so that's quite effective but what I thought if you've got a raised bed and these are four foot and that's about foot square you're losing a, a kind of a chunk of, of, of growing space so I was looking at these paths and um, I had kind of big deep thick wood chip mulches on those as well because the wood chips are freely available so I'd mulch up to the top and because it's on the slope I'd keep this one this level and then step it down step it down and then sort of terrace the site that way and then that that was quite nice as well because if you've got your mulch down here and these paths are only 20 inches wide 
Well, not, not even that, no, they're only about 14 inches wide in some places, so they're just about the sort of not much for longer than the length of your shoe, so it's, it's quite awkward. So it's quite nice if, the, in a way, if these are mulched up to here, because then you've got a bit more space and you're not really getting your foot wedged in these little narrow paths. So what I thought I'd do is um, use the same system as these, but rather than set those into the to the ground, into the beds, I just uh, on here. So basically, I'll just do this. So I, I dig down and then take this container. Where's my ground up? The ground's just disappeared. That's right. Um, I'll copy this and then paste it in here. And then I'll just move. So I'm digging this material away, and um, this is much, uh, the scan is wrong here, so it looks like I'm digging out the whole bed, but I'm only digging out the path, and then obviously that wood chip will just be under here like that. And um, with this one, it's that would be that level like that, and then you've got the lab wood chip underneath, and then what I do is get a kind of um, scaffold board and make a lid. And because these, this is under the path, you're not actually losing any space, so you can actually do away with that container if you wanted and then that might be 8 foot, 10 foot long so you've got 10 foot by a base, base maybe 400 millimeters deep so 16 inches deep a foot wide so you've got a great big volume of compost so if, if you imagine if, if these are a series of, of raised beds if you've got a kind of worm bed and then a raised bed, a worm bed, a raised bed you can probably get about two inches of mulch each year just from the space uh, taken up by the paths. But what I, I would say, if you can kind of get access to a kind of Dalek compost bin, and then you can pre-compost material, and obviously the Daleks, maybe 330 litres or 220 litres, they're smaller size ones. You can part compost that material, and then take that material and put it into the worm beds, and then because it's not taking up any space, you can leave it there six, three months, six months, eighteen months, or whatever. And um, because these are worm beds as well, you're going to have loads and loads and loads of worms in there. Because worms are going to be kind of moving in because they can find that food source, and they're going to be breeding in these trays as well. You've got a kind of supercharged sort of worm population going on. They're protected from predators. You're not going to get rats. You're not going to get foxes. You're not going to get hedgehogs. You're not going to be digging them up because they've got a layer of the scaffold board under here. They've got wood chip here, they've got loads of drainage. You can actually work organic matter all around that, that hole you've made, and then the worms will be moving through. And these will be more of the red wiggler kind of compost worms. And then outside, you'll have earthworms as well, and they'll be working in. And it's, what I have found as well, if you kind of imagine the, the surface area of that bed, that's only going to be four foot. But then you've got the side of this, this board here, which is that's 8 inches, that's 225 millimetres and then you've got the depth of here so the, the sort of interchange between microbes and the sort of soil biology from that, that worm bed is kind of massive so if you had just had a worm bed like this and then you just sort of sit it straight on the soil obviously the, that soil contact patch is only the sort of foot square on the bottom but by burying that in the ground it, the worms are kind of all around that and there's, there's microbes, there's all the other sort of detrivores, all the, all the wood lice that they'll, they'll be in here and they'll be working that organic matter down. And so once you've got that established ecosystem, if you just lift that scaffold board, and what you can do, you can just walk along these, because these are kind of just the edge of the scaffold board anyhow, and then you can just get some newspaper, um, leaves as you're trying to weeding from beds you can nip the weeds out chuck them straight in there like a kind of rubbish bin for organic matter 
um, kitchen food waste, you can have compost rolls and things, and then at the end of the day, all you have to do is put put the, the lid straight back on. So what I what I came to doing this with the the the, the um, Dalek compost bins, I'll make this a bit smaller so it's more in proportion to the size. So if you imagine, I mean, that that bed is much larger than that relatively, so it's sort of something like this. So this would be my like kind of feeding station previously until I made the underpath worm beds and I'd have these elsewhere on the, the allotment plot and what I'd do is a big mix of um, brewer's waste so spent hops, spent grain um, we get arborist wood chip from local tree surgeons free at the allotments as well so I, I'm basically doing half by volume wood chip which is a mix of um, hammered sort of wood chips. So the wood itself is quite small particles. They're only about half inch square, sort of 10, 12 millimeters sort of square pieces. So they're really, really small. It's not like the kind of um, part rotted bark that people will use as a sort of decorative mulch in the gardens. Um, so there's, there'll be a, a range of twiggy stuff. There'll be some leaf, mulch, um, leaf well, green leaves from, from the trees when they're kind of shredded as well. And there'll be a mix of deciduous trees um, and softwood trees, and because it's North London, there's um, parks around there um, nearby. There's woods and there's private gardens as well. It's Muswell Hill, so there's quite big gardens too. So what I do is um, I compost else off off to sort of one side of the allotment plot. I've got 12 of these, and I, I work in three groups of th or four groups of three bins. So I kind of. As, as one fills up, I work on the next one, and then the next one, and that's the first one's half full, and then I move the remaining half contents of that bin and, and kind of top up the other bins, try and keep them full at all times, so there's an empty container, so when I get the brewer's waste, brew waste, I can kind of just put it straight in, and I keep bags of wood chip nearby as well, so it's good to have carbons, so you've got things like shredded paper, um, corrugated cardboard and what you can do you can even line these things with corrugated cardboard because that will work down and it keeps a nice sort of damp sort of environment but um, once it's initially composted for maybe six to eight weeks something like that in summer it's much faster in winter it's a little bit slower but basically what you can notice is that the worms will start moving into this part composted material and then when the worms are already in there you know it's 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 cool enough or there's areas of it which are cool enough and you can just take that scaffold board off and then one of these 330 litre compost bins you can divide that out between the 25 litre containers however long that 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 path is and then fill that right up and then just put your put your lid straight back on but i use um free sharing websites like um, waste nothing, Gumtree, um, eBay, you can kind of look at um, Dalek compost bins, see if they come up, see if there's something local. Um, there's also websites called like Nextdoor which is quite good so it's uh, it's a just a sort of free, free free waste sharing site but it's just in your area so you can limit the area so it's just, you can just say oh has anyone got an old compost bin they're not using I could kind of make use for, for allotment. Um, most people, if they've got one in the back of the garden, they'll sort of think, oh, I haven't used it in years, it's, it's just a waste of space. It's, it's, it'd be nice. I, I, I would have taken it away and, and dumped it, but they'd probably be happier it's, it's going to a home and being, being used. And so obviously they had an interest in composting in the first place, so they've, they've still got their interest, it's just they haven't got the time to maybe, maybe use it. Um, these are available subsidised through the council as well, so it's quite nice. So you can buy them new for sort of 10, 20 pounds or something like that once you've got delivery. But obviously if you can make use of uh, things available, especially plastics, rather than, rather than using them, rather than people throwing it away or dumping it, you can save uh, kind of using virgin materials and uh, putting plastic into the landfill, which is really good. And what I find, if you can get these compost bins, you can fill them right up. They are massively productive. They're not the best sort of use of space because of kind of they say they've got a reasonably large footprint and the actual volume, if, if you imagine it was rectangular, you'd get a lot more material in there. But that's going off a little bit of a tangent, but what I wanted to say is when you've got these feeding stations in, in the ground, you can just lift that straight out, tip it into the bed where you want it, you've got a hole there with lots of part composted material and wood chip and it will hold its sort of space because it's actually got soil obstruction not kind of digging it up and disturbing it 
and then you can slot it straight back in. And in in the sort of late autumn and winter, what I tend to do is actually mature the compost in, on the beds because you've got all this any kind of leachate it's going down into that compost um, the, the, the knobworms seem to love that transition between established beds where that's their natural habitat and then you've got this layer of kind of part composted material and fungal kind of activity and they'll be all around the outside and that, what I do is I kind of mulch up around the outside of the bin as well and you'll find when, when you get the moisture running down the outside you'll get a kind of leachate area and the, there'll be loads and loads of knobworms around here and it is really that sort of symbiosis between all the kind of soil life that's going on here. The established kind of fungal activity in the soil as well. And then you'll have things like, um, especially when you've got like all this sort of wood, wood chip around here, you'll get um, beetle larvae and things like that. And obviously you'll get predators, but then you'll get the things that, you'll get the predators and then you'll get the kind of, um, <laughs> I don't know what to call them really, um, obviously the, the pests, but I don't refer to things as pests or vermin, it's just wildlife and it's just maybe unwanted wildlife sometimes, but then you've got to sort of think, what can I do to establish a little bit of the balance so you're not having to rely on man-made um, pesticides, to, which, which, which are ludicrous, you killing everything just for the sake of killing one particular species, and obviously those species are a food source for the things that we like and the things we enjoy and the things we want to encourage. So. I mean, I'm growing produce. I'm not growing to produce to, to survive. I'm growing produce because I'm sort of fascinated by the living world and, and all those massively complex processes around it. And um, one thing that's quite apparent, I'm posting this video on a, on a website, a Facebook group called Worm Composting UK. And worm composting sounds quite quite straightforward, but when you look into all the all the intricate relationships between different organisms and soil life, worms that or just one species of worm are related to different species of worm and how they interact and, and obviously when you're using organic matter and you, you're feeding the soil and you're feeding the organic or, the organic I can't say the organisms in that organic matter and then in turn the plants are using those sort of soluble nutrients which are made available from the soil life to, to grow. And the, and the big, biggest difference between sort of no dig and using these really lovely fertile compost, compost um, of self homemade kind of compost mulches, because compost you'll buy in a shop is completely different from compost you'll make and uh, dig out from a compost bin. Um, you can't really buy, well, you, you, I, I, I'd say you, you can't buy compost that you, you make yourself if, you, if you're a kind of. A, it, been composting for any real time without spending stupid amounts of money on, on, on crazy tiny bags of compost and then you've obviously got the kind of um, pollutants from distributing that and, and, and moving all that waste material around the country which is crazy when you can do it for basically for free obviously there's an element of labour involved but one of these things the more you do it then the more enjoyable it is and the more you can learn and especially with Facebook groups like Worm Composting UK it's making that, that information available to other people so if other people sort of think oh like for example these sort of containers oh that's good that's 25 litre container which you can use into a worm bed and the other thing on what I thought I'd do as you've got your kind of Dalek compost bin here so as the level sort of drops right down and then you've got a half compost bin which isn't doing anything um, what I'd do is get one of these, put it in top, or, or kind of dig a dig a bit out, put it in top, and then you've got your kind of fresh kitchen waste and scraps. And especially over winter, then you've got the sort of residual thermal mass from that amount of compost, and then you've got all that soil life which is ready to go. It might be like I've kind of used up all the organic matter in here, and the worms might be moving down elsewhere. And if there's one of these worm beds, they're going to be making a beeline for that. But if you can kind of put use this as a soil feeding station in a compost bin then you've got all that organic matter all that life all working around it and that that material will compost much much faster than this if you just had this sitting on a concrete slab over here so and you're not wasting all that space in here because in effect the, the compost is right right up to the top again and then you've got all that kind of additional volume and then when it comes to emptying in this in the spring rather than sort of thinking oh I've only, I've only got a little tiny bit left in because it's all broken down you've got 300 litres of compost and what you can do is just 
move this away because this is lightweight and then you've got your kind of fresh compost and you can just mulch over like that the soil feeding station even move it move it up like that and get get a bit of wood chip un underneath as well so you've got more drainage and more organic matter which will, will work into the soil so that's um that's just a kind of example of how I sort of deal with that sort of soil runoff drainage working organic matter deep into the soil without disturbing natural beds so the I don't, I don't, it's not anything I've invented I mean I've seen these sort of worm soil feeding stations um, used and, and what I'll do as, as well um, where I've got these with holes drilled in them I'll just ungroup that object so I'll make them just with the holes drilled into the base and not in the, in the sides and then what I will do is just kind of use that as a sort of second tier as well so you can you imagine you've got that interchange between the, the worms and soil life on this container and then this is more like a short shoot where you've got compost rolls uh, which is part of composted material wrapped in newspaper and then you can have air pipes and things in this as well and then you've got your kind of similar to here you've got rather than a, a kind of scaffold board it can just I don't even need to be a, it could just be plywood or something like that oh it doesn't want to pick up the right piece anyway and then move that's the one. Isn't it? So you can just put a little lid. That could be um, pallets, limber, plywood, any kind of freely available material, and you can just use it. Use a brick or something like that, just to weigh it down. So stop it. It's from blowing off in the wind. Um, what I do is I, I, I make aeration fittings here and put a kind of elastic bungee cord around the top as well, so it holds it on. But the nice thing about these is they're only 25 liters, so they're quite portable. So you can just take the whole thing, move it away, and then you've got that that one which you can just move. If it lets you move the right one, you can just empty that out. So I, it, it's interesting, and what I have noticed, the, these beds are are superb. They're really phenomenal. And each year, this system with the kind of pre-composting material in, in the Daleks and, and organic matter and um, vermicomposting and, and maturing compost in, in situ in, in, in the bed or on top of the beds has, has been really 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 good. Um, I thought I'd just take this chance to just do a sort of visual illustration because obviously when you post pictures like this people sort of think oh that's kind of good but um, looks like it kind of takes up space in, in the in the sort of growing bed and so I thought I'd show it in, in relationship to these sort of in, in ground feeding stations or the other thing what you can do as well because these things are all kind of connected and it's a similar system but a slightly different application if you've got these in the ground and that, that compost is already pretty much ready to go you can get the one, and this is the one's got holes in it, but you can stack it in here and then you can just slide your scaffold board along a little bit so the rest are kind of exposed. So this is like a kind of conning tower on a submarine sticking out the ground. You could add the fresh material in here and then that will be like a baiting station and the, and the worms that are in this worm bed will kind of move towards that, that new one. And then what you could do is, is you could even sort of put it in the ground somewhere else or say so like if that was on top of a path now you've already got the worms in here and you could do the same thing with another one and then you can move them onto that that one as well so then you'd have a worm feeding tower but you've already harvested the worms without doing any work because obviously worms are moving through the ground on their own accord and they will move towards that that fresh material and what i have done is i've got these worm towers in in the um in the poly tunnel and um, 
I've made sort of little sumps for these filled with biochar so any leachate is absorbs into the biochar to help um, activate the biochar so I, or the charcoal so I can use that as a as a soil additive but um, yeah so that's it's quite a good system and obviously these containers as well if you've got access to these you can make sort of compartmentalized compost bins as well just by putting those into a, a sort of compost uh, pallet bin or something like that and then when it comes to harvesting you can just take these off put them aside then you've got the bottom half of the bin you can take that one out you can tip this one out there into a, an empty one so then the empty container from that you can tip that one up so it's been completely rotated with not a huge amount of effort you can just lifting that container so if you imagine you had a container here and then you had a little trowel or a little fork and then you one two three it's going to be i don't know 20 minutes filling up each container but by the fact you can lift them up and, and what is so nice as well when it's ready to harvest you just tip that into the ground and it, it's done there's no wheelbarrows involved you can just carry it or you put it put a couple of those in a wheelbarrow and they're already nice and full and it would take seconds rather than minutes it's 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 a good system so that's all for now i think it's about 30 minutes um, hopefully this uh, made sense but uh, that and these illustrations have sort of helped to sort of clarify some of the the ideas i've got on the on group and on my my youtube channel as well i'll probably post a few more of these because um, i'm working with um continuous flow through bins with 55 um gallon 200 litre containers and it what I'd like to do is, is is people could sort of say, oh, why why don't you do this, or have you considered doing this, and then then building this as an established system, or or just offering it as an idea, so other people can come along and sort of think, oh, I might try one of those beds, or I've got some containers I can can use. But you're not going out and spending hundred pounds on a on a kind of uh, off the shelf sort of um, stacking tier three tier sort of worm bin like a can of worms or a worm city or something like that. And for a hundred quid, there's a, a lot of things you can buy for an allotment, or put it towards a polytunnel, or get get a nice cold frame, or something like that, or just get some salvage ma um, materials and um, a tank of petrol to sort of pick things up to, to get some raised beds or, or a box of screws to so put some things together. I think a hundred pound for a hundred liters of, of not very effective worm sort of habitat is just a bit silly but obviously these things are really designed just to sort of introduce people and in a way it kind of put me off worm composting because I associated it with something which only makes the 50 litres of worm casts and then I thought well if I've got a, a 25 metre by I don't know 37 metre allotment that's not going to go anywhere I want tons of compost and when it as fast as I can get it and then while I'm making that I want more compost to, to replace it what gets used up in the season as well otherwise you're just basically kind of sustaining what you've got rather than kind of building and, and developing anything so but by combining existing freely available chuck out compost bins and these 25 litre containers which are free and scaffold board then immediately that's gone from like a, a 10 foot long worm bed and obviously this this soil all around here will be benefit from having that that kind of organic matter added to it so it's not just the container itself there's the surrounding soil and and, and yeah I, I really think there's that transition especially clay because clay is high in sort of um nutrients but it's just got no structure so it can't really do anything with it and it's just got that extremes of temperature and goes from rock to kind of sloppy wet kind of sticky goo so by having this organic matter around it and the, the worms will work into that and as you even empty this you can kind of work it into it a little bit yourself as well that will really take chunks chunks out of that clay each year that will be so much better but the fact that the, the moisture level will be constant through the year because it's not exposed to the sun is not getting baked like a kind of ceramic pot so yeah I'm, I've I, I wouldn't say I'm, I've kind of invented anything but it this is a system that I'm happy with that, um, I've sort of developed through picking up ideas here and there and, and, and sort of putting them together and I think 
what happens, especially nowadays, it's hard to actually invent a completely new idea, but what you can do is you can sort of take aspects of different kind of methods and put them together. And with the internet and Facebook groups and, and online groups and websites, there's so much information, but the Worm Composting um, UK Facebook group is, is it's it's by far the one of the most friendly kind of Facebook groups you could imagine really and what I do enjoy is people will ask a kind of in a way it can be a kind of a silly question but then it makes people think and then you look up or borrow a friend's microscope or look into something else and then it's just like this <sighs> opens up literally a wormhole and then there's more and more information and if you just try to get by and, and live on this planet the more you can understand about it the more you, you can comprehend the more fantastic it is so um, yeah I just think it's really good but I hope this can be of, uh, of use and um, if you've got any questions just uh, post in the comments and I'll try and get back to you or, or elaborate or uh, clarify in, in, a, in another video or, or just reply to your comment I'm going to make an uh, answer any questions so thanks thanks for your time